In this part of the problem, we are going to uh, go ahead and find the work that is actually uh, stored within the system which, from the first part of the problem. And remember, there is uh, two concentric spheres, one of them with the charges shown here and the radii shown here. And in this part of the problem, though, we're going to take a different route. We're going to go ahead and find the work, uh, the energy stored using this relationship. And as a quick, brief uh, overview, this relationship came from the fact that you can't simply just uh, superimpose the energy that's stored within this system and then within this system, because the energy is actually quadratic uh, mathematically. There's you got this cross term right here that. Uh, you have to take into account so um, hopefully that this is going to go ahead and add up to what we um, found from the first part of the problem so the first thing that we're going to go ahead and do is just expand these two terms out in terms of uh, uh, the the way that we found the energy before which is the integration of the, uh, the, the energy stored within the system and then evaluate it over uh, all space uh, the all volume space before I move on here uh, one of the things I'm going to do, go ahead and do, is just change the notation, these 1s and 2s. I'm going to change these to A's and B's, that way they kind of correspond better to the actual system that we have shown over to the right right here. So, of course, this is the one with the radii A, and this one corresponds to the radii B. So, looking at this work for the sphere that has the radii of A, We'll go ahead and expand this out and just call this uh, A right here. And then I'll go ahead and finish the rest of the term. So this would be the same thing for uh, the energy that's stored in uh, the, the sphere with radii B. And then I'm going to go ahead and just uh, expand these out right here. And, uh, of course, this, since this is a volume integral, we're going to integrate over uh, all space. We're gonna, this is going to turn into a triple integral, so we'll have epsilon naught and then three integrals right here. And then I'm going to go ahead and dot these two electric fields, the electric field from this one and the electric field from this one. So I'll go ahead and start with the electric field from the inner radii here. I'll put this in parentheses uh, right here. And so that's, of course, going to be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught times the charge, the total charge of that. And then we're going to integrate over all the radius, and that, of course, points in the r hat direction. And then we're going to go ahead and dot it with the uh, electric field from B. And remember, it's got a negative, uh, negative Q charge, so I'll go ahead and represent that here. So that's 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught negative Q over r squared pointing in the r hat direction. And then um, I'm going to go ahead and put in the differentials. So the differentials are going to be r squared. I'm kind of just going to run it out of room. We'll go ahead and put them right here. So it would be uh, r squared uh, sine theta dr d phi d theta. And those are going to correspond to the following limits here. Of course, for uh, theta goes from 0 to pi. Phi goes all the way in a circle, so 0 to 2 pi. And here's the interesting part about um, uh, the r integral. And this is the major concept. Uh, I think for this problem right here is that I'm go ahead. I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze this actually down here because I'm gonna draw a picture on the top here. So let's go ahead and squeeze these in here. I'll put them in orange. So if we look at the electric field, remember uh, inside a uh, uh, inside a conductor, inside of uh, any any sort of charge, uh, symmetric charge here, specifically spherical shells, the electric uh, electric field inside is going to be zero. So I'll go ahead and draw the electric field lines for the inside, the inner uh, inner sphere right now. So those will go emanate from the radius all the way out to infinity, although I'll just kind of stop here. I'm just going to make two lines here. Oops. So this is what they look like, right? And they only exist on the inside. Now, if I do the same thing with the outer uh, sphere here, I'll draw those in blue. Those are, of course, going to emanate from the uh, surface of the charge, except they're going to point inside because we have a negative charge here. Right? So we have uh, an electric field that exists on the outside, causing from this surface, but then we have an electric field here that's also coming, uh, exists on, on this in-between area right here. So there's no electric field that uh, exists here. 
The only electric field that exists in between these two are the electric field contributing from this circle right here. And then both electric fields exist on the outside of the circle right here. So when we so when we look at this dot product right here, the dot product of the two electric fields, the dot product is not get, is going to be zero right here because it's essentially uh, zero dotted with zero. And then the dot product is going to be zero here because it's essentially zero because the electric field here stops here. So there's no electric field coming from the outside circle here. So it's going to be zero dotted with the electric field coming from this one. So that's going to be zero. And the only place that the electric field, uh, the, the dot product between the two electric fields is going to be something non-zero is anything on the outside, also known as uh, B to infinity. And that's going to be our limit of integration right there. So we're going to go from B to infinity. All right. So now that we got that, we'll go ahead and move on. And uh, we'll go ahead and expand these. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm just going to clump these two together because they're going to have a lot of the same like terms right here. So I'll go ahead and pull out the epsilon naught over 2. And then I'll put a bracket. And I'm going to capture these two right here. So remember, this is the electric field from A. And we already did that here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Except I'm only going to do one integral sign. And the reason why is because that integral sign is just the the r squared dr because we know that whenever we do this integral right here uh, if we look at all the electric fields there's no theta or phi terms so we can just go ahead and evaluate these uh, theta and phi limits of integration which always uh, are going to be equal to 4 pi whenever we don't have uh, anything any uh, of those variables on the inside so both of these terms are going to have a 4 pi and i'm just going to go ahead and pull those out and put them into the parentheses right here, uh, outside the brackets right here. So we have four pi right here, and all that's going to be left is the um, uh, the r term. And I'm going to go ahead and put in the uh, uh, elect the value for the electric field uh, q over r squared, and parentheses and that's squared. And since this is for the electric field from A, remember the electric field from A goes from the outside all the way out into infinity. So that would be uh, A to infinity, which we'll reflect here. So A to infinity. And then plus, of course, now this is the electric field for B. And that goes from B out to infinity. And it's going to be the same thing inside the parentheses here. All squared r squared dr and bracket and now we're going to look at this term same thing uh, these uh, theta and phi terms are just going to be equal to 4 pi so I'll go ahead and pull out that 4 pi all that's left is the uh, r integral and I'll go ahead and dot these two there'll be a negative sign from this negative charge I'll go ahead and pull that out and turn this into a negative so that's a negative. And then this will just be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, q over r. Uh, everything's just squared at this point. r squared dr. All right, now we'll go ahead and um, uh, as you can see, we'll, we'll just go ahead and start pulling out uh, terms from all these and kind of start simplifying things in the next step. So common to both of these are going to be a q squared, 4 pi, epsilon naught, but we'll leave the r squared here. So epsilon naught, 4 pi, and then let's see, q squared, and I'm going to do it like this, 4 pi squared, epsilon naught squared. So it'll make, make it easier to cancel. And then we'll just go ahead and leave it for one more step, so this would be... Uh, r squared over r to the fourth dr plus another integral from b to a or sorry b to infinity r squared to r to the fourth dr and bracket plus uh, let's see here oops minus epsilon naught and then common to sorry just adjusting common to all these are going to be uh, so we have, oops we'll leave our 4 pi here 
and then we're just going to take out a 4 pi epsilon knot here, and we're going to take out a q squared right here. Let's see here, so 1 over. I'll do the same trick, 4 pi squared, epsilon knot squared. Um, let's see here, q squared up top. All that's left is an integral to infinity. And then we have uh, r squared, r to the fourth, dr here. All right. So as we move forward, we can go ahead and start uh, canceling things out. So I'll go ahead and start over here to start cleaning things up. So we have a 4 pi that can cancel out with this r squared. This epsilon naught cancels out with this epsilon naught. And then we can combine these two to make it into an 8. Looking over here, we can go ahead and turn these into 1 over r squared. Looking over here, we'll do the same thing. Take out the 4 pi, take out an epsilon naught, taking out an r squared, turning it into uh, 1 over r squared here. Okay. So what we'll do is now, uh, let's see here. Let's clean it up. We have a q squared over 8 pi epsilon naught bracket and we'll go ahead and evaluate this integral right here so this is just an integral of 1 over r squared uh, dr to this so this of course is going to be 1 over a minus 0 plus 1 over b minus 0 in bracket minus and so we have a 1 over 8 pi epsilon naught here we have a 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught over here so what we can do is get it to the same denominator so we'll have a 2 over 8 pi epsilon naught times a q squared and then evaluating this integral it's just going to be uh, 1 over b minus infinity 1 over infinity sorry and uh, of course that's just going to be that we'll go ahead and pull out a parentheses we'll have something this is a common term to all of them 1 over a minus or plus 1 over b minus 2 over b, which of course is going to simplify into q squared, 8 pi epsilon naught a, oops, 1 over a minus 1 over b. And that is exactly what we got for the first part of the problem. Nice work.